Welcome to Art Happens, where we talk with local artists about their art practice and upcoming art happenings. We're your host, Christiana Leach, Artist Relations Manager, and I'm Jen Saffron, Director of Communications at the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council. We're both artists, and as part of GPAC's mission, we serve artists in our region. Today, our guests are Bill Miller and Gavin Benjamin, two artists who, after leaving Pittsburgh for extended periods, have now returned to our fair city to grow and continue their art practices. Thank you for joining us at PCTV's Art Happens, Gavin and Bill. Hi. <laughs> so. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Gavin and Bill. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we invited you on the show today because uh, not only are we fans of your work and we love what you do uh, artistically, but we also like you. And we wanted to know if you would talk to us a little bit about, you know, you lived in Pittsburgh, then you left Pittsburgh for a while, and now you're back in Pittsburgh making art. You've been making art the whole time. Uh, you both support yourselves as artists, right? So you're Correct. working artists. And so... How's that working for you now that you're back in the Berg? Where are you working on work outside of Pittsburgh? Tell us a little bit about how are what you surviving? You're doing. <laughs> yeah, how are you surviving? We want to know. That's a very interesting question. Um, um, I think when I when I left the city, I knew that I'd reached my glass ceiling here very quickly, and it's not such a big city that you can just keep climbing. And at a certain point, you have to leave. Um, and you have to go out and you have to have your adventures and you have to go like meet people and do the fairs and just see things. And then at a certain point you realize that um, moving back to Brooklyn isn't exactly kind of ideal again, although you grew up there. Um, and the things you missed about here, which was a space and about um, pr like cer a certain privacy and a certain amount of like, I can shut down, I can go into my own cell, my own bubble, that you can't do in New York. So for me, that was very. Um, uh, for me, that was very. That was very. That's one of the main reasons why I came back. Plus, I had a great community of friends and people that I met here mm -hmm. for the first ten years, and I've kept in touch. And so, yeah, you know. I kind of agree to an extent. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I necessarily hit the glass ceiling before I left, but I was certainly glad to go on and do some other things and go to other places. And the best thing about doing that is you go to other regions, live there, meet people, and see how things are done elsewhere and you can move them into the kind of the things that you're going to do. Whether it be contacts or you know, having shows in other areas or meeting people from around the country, it's just nice to get out and you know, show your work elsewhere, not just in one city, I think. And once right. you do that, then you kind of feel, for me, then I feel like it's fine to come back to a city like Pittsburgh and continue to work and, and do what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So when you show your work elsewhere, you're also selling it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right? shows, yeah. galleries, yeah. whatever that you can get into. And, you know, it does happen if you leave somewhere and go meet other people that you find out other opportunities. Right. You can't always predict what's out there if you don't go out there and, and look for them. Find them. But also Pittsburgh, for what I was doing, Pittsburgh was such a small market. It is such a small market. Um, and there's only so much um, wall real estate, That's right. right? You know, so it's like and everyone's fighting oh, for the, <laughs> everyone's fighting for that real estate for that super large piece, you know. Right. So I mean, um, you know, at a certain point, you just it just goes boom. You've reached your top. You, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Right. So you, you know, you gotta like sort of if you want to keep yeah. moving and working and hustling, you gotta. Right. Yeah. For me, at the time that I left, which was '97. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd been working and publishing and doing my art and doing a lot of different things. So I felt like I had got to a point where I was really, I wanted to go somewhere else for a while. I, mean, I was excited to do that. Mm -hmm. But coming back to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh now is so much different than it was then. It's a much different type of city. Right. It has, tell, tell us some more about it, that. It has a lot, you know, it's just, you know, because of how the world has changed with the internet age, right. we all have everything everywhere. The whole world can be anywhere. We, we know right. that. And Pittsburgh and a lot of artisans and small companies and small groups of people get together and do that. Mm -hmm. They make that happen. And it's happening everywhere where there are creative people doing stuff. And Pittsburgh certainly has picked up on that. See, I think, you know, the, the interwebs has helped, <laughs> us, <laughs> has helped us make larger global uh, That's right. connections, right? right. But I still, mm -hmm. isn't there still a power of actually meeting that person first I and think then so. maintaining the connection? I mean, yeah. can you... Is it possible to build uh, 
connections to show and sell your work without actually meeting the person first and having it totally be online? You probably could be both, it both, could happen in both ways. I mean, really, you can do some legwork or groundwork and try to meet people and do it that way, but certainly getting out and, and doing that is what makes it unpredictable. You can't predict what's going to happen. Right. right. What are you, right. I, I agree with him. It's very unpredictable. You never, because I mean, sold a piece to a client five years ago and this client was buying from other clients and this client just called me up about a project, you know, so you never know like what's going to really going happen. Minds, you know, yeah. you just got to keep like shuffling those cards and just getting stuff out to people, you know. And Bill, you just went to LA to do I a did. little bit of legwork and meet yeah, people directly. Right. So what was that like for you when you were was, in LA? It was cool. It was great. I had a show in LA in 08 and that gallery closed. So I've been trying to do some leg work. And get, get into that market. Yeah, so and I was able to find a place out there, and it looked like I was showing a small show in, in January there. Um, so I've got to put that together. And that came together nicely, because I had some contacts, and the woman who had the gallery knows a lot of people, and mm -hmm. she connected me with four or five people, and I got something going. So that was nice. Great. They think you're crazy for living in Pittsburgh? <laughs> no, no, people don't say that. I don't think people say that's that. That's really? Thing. I mean, because it used to so be. So like you have to get over the Pittsburgh right. I don't, you know, I mean, mentality. maybe. Do you feel well, that way? I mean, I no, don't I feel mean, that not, way here. Well, well, not since all the hipsters left. All the hipsters, basically, or the cool kids moved to New York and then came back and recreate Brooklyn. Um, right. Yeah, that's, a good, you know, that's kind um, of what I was saying, too. You know, it's, um, I, I think it's quite funny. I think it's quite interesting. Um, you know, you have Lawrenceville, which is its own little bubble, real estate right. bubble. Right. You know, where a house is seven hundred thousand dollars. I can't phantom that in my mind. In I mean, Pittsburgh. like in right. Lawrenceville, I mean, Shady Side. I'm like, yeah, they right. go. Right. You know, Fox Chapel, of course. You know, sure. but I'm like Lawrenceville. I'm like, uh. <laughs> so yeah, in less than twenty years. Yeah, in less than twenty years. Less than twenty years. Let's be honest. That's the yeah. largest. That's the largest real estate bubble. I mean, so artists are now again squeezed out, gone. Right. You know, so it's, what's the next neighborhood for artists pretty much now? Well, what do you think the next neighborhood for I have for no clue. Is? I'm not connected in that way. I'm not clued in anymore. <laughs> well, <coughs> it seems like, I mean, Bill, you have your studio in Wilkinsburg. It does right. seem like there's quite a bit going on in Wilkinsburg. Wilkinsburg's a really nice, well, the building is the mine factory, yeah. mm -hmm. I guess, that yeah. building. And there's a lot of great stuff going on in that building, art and other stuff. But also around, there's another big building. I don't know the guy that owns it, but it's just a few half a mile away, mm -hmm. same kind of size place. And there's all kinds of, you know, stuff going on in Wilkinsburg. It's, mm -hmm. it, but it doesn't, yeah. Wilkinsburg doesn't have a, like a downtown center where, right. you know, where not much is happening. It's right. still kind like of undeveloped. Main they, they it have is a main street. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it, has, it's it's hasn't, turned, it hasn't yeah. turned into a place where cool things are happening. It's still dry. Right. So bars and restaurants don't come in there. But it's such a beautiful right. uh, strip downtown. It would be great if it started to change over. That I've lived in Pittsburgh great. 28 years, and I just found out that Wilkinsburg was dry. I had no idea. Yeah. And I, was like, I, I didn't even know this thing even it's existed really, anymore. It's really one of the real reasons why, you know, all these great restaurant developers, I guess, I'm presuming, that that's why they haven't gone there. Gone because there, yeah. you can't get a, real, a, right, a liquor license. Right, you can't make your money, right. But if that were to change, I think that's a beautiful area. And it's fertile because Wilkinsburg, you know, for what I do, is um, makes me... A, Salivate because there's so many empty houses there. Oh it's my so gosh, many, yeah. there's so much of the neighborhoods yeah. not not been turned over yet. There's so much potential for that to grow and to be changed. So I drive around and I look at all the abandoned houses and I think, you know, I want to go in and see what's inside. But also, wow, wouldn't it be great if some of that people? Well, they actually have a program, a housing. It's starting to happen, you. but still, there's a lot of yeah, empty I mean, it's, buildings. It's a lot yeah. of money. But, but Bill, isn't part of why you want to go in these houses also some of your material? Yeah, that's that what I want. Yeah, <laughs> to, get, to get material. Can you yeah, talk yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. about your material? Well, yeah. And then I want to also. Yeah, well, my work is uh, made of old linoleum floors. So linoleum is a all natural material from the early 1900s to mid 50 mid 1950s. So I'm looking for old houses that haven't been turned over. Can you come in my house? I have rules linoleum flooring. Anyhow, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Take, but yeah, so that's so yeah. So when I see an old house that's boarded up or windows are open and cracked, I want to go in and see <laughs> right, right, right. see what's in and there. And salvage. Then salvage it, right. right? Yeah. And I think it'd be interesting to find out ways to maybe do that uh, with permission, yeah, legally. rather than <laughs> <laughs> rather than the old days, whenever you you know you might get arrested or something like that. Right. So, yeah. But yeah, so that's that's one of the things. And Wilkinsburg is an area I think would be really really nice to see continue to grow. Right. And, and tell us a bit about your medium, Gavin. Uh, my medium is photography, um, but it's geared towards mixed media. Yeah. Um, mixed mediums, I call it. 
Um, I sometimes use collage, but it's basic. It's the core is photography. Um, a lot of still lives. Um, I pretty much work with like a concept, and I decided like I pretty much uh, dive into art history. Yes. Which is a big thing for me. Uh, I was going through my uh, 1400s, 1600s period with still lives, and and it was a lot of fun. It was great, and looking at all this great, rich material and. You know, sort of like watching the Borgias and just, <laughs> you know, just yeah, all that sure, stuff. Right. You know, just right. fantastic. Right, your influences, right. Your right. Influences. You know what I mean? The colors, <laughs> um, all that stuff. I mean, it's very important. You, you know, you kind of get that feeling. Um, and then, you know, I put a twist to it. So uh, it's pretty, it pretty, it works. Currently, I'm working on, um, I'm out of the darkness of that era, you know, the whole, um, you know, morose. You know, like it's beautifully morose. Beautifully morose. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like glossy morose. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm moving out of that. I'm moving out, out of that into a more modern sort of feeling with work. I'm doing a lot of landscapes, mm -hmm. um, a lot of still lives again, but um, not painted with light, and it doesn't have like 20 different things going on in the scene. And it's not like you're watching like. Peter Greenway film runway at this time. It's just, <laughs> you know, it's just beautiful images. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Is the collage work in the pre pre preparation of the shot or is it after the shot? Um, sometimes it's both. Um, depending on if I'm doing like a real collage series, um, the preparation pretty much is before the shot. Right. Okay. And then when I scan, it becomes the shot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then when, as I'm working with my own images, because I shoot film, medium format film, I will shoot something and then I'll go back in and I'll shoot like maybe 20 frames. And I'll go back in and I'll take different things from each frame and put it back, mm -hmm. rebuild a shot just mm -hmm. the way how mm -hmm. I want it. Things will be darker, some things will be lighter. And are you shooting? Are you shooting with like a six seven six? Or six seven. Yeah, Mamaya, RZ. I really love those cameras. Oh, I, I mean, it's I, I love watch. Yeah, yeah. film I, is I, cool. Right, yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned art an art fair. I kind of heard it. In like, yeah. Have um, both of you done art fairs I've done in a other few, cities? Like, like mm -hmm. festivals or conferences, stuff like that. Sure. I was in. Oh, go, go ahead, Shash. No, 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 you sit there. I, I showed at the sofa uh, uh, sculpture, I forget the exact. The sofa art sofa fair in, in Chicago, Chicago a couple right. times. Uh, there was a couple, there was one um, in Harvard, Michigan that I did. And I do, I'm going back this year uh, to do one in Barcelona for the fourth time, mm -hmm. which is called Drap Art, and it's a recycled art fair. Uh, you know, international recycled artists get together, and so I'll be doing that again for the fourth time. So. And we're looking at bringing drop art here to Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's right. It's possible. Right right. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's going to be great. Right. Sure. Nice. So, Gavin. Yeah. Um, well, I work with several different galleries. Um, one of the galleries that represent me in Paris. She does scope and all of that stuff. So um, I don't. I try not to go to the art fairs themselves. Um, it's kind of, it's, for me, it, it'll be kind of a little depressing to see all this work and see the price tags and, you know, I don't know, it's... It, it goes in both directions. It, it goes in both directions. You know, for, for what right. I do, uh -huh. it's really, I really want to be around the work when people see it, because they right. don't always understand it. Right, right. right. that's that's probably quite true. And it really true. is important right. for right. me, and it's right. actually when I'm most happy to speak to people, right. because if right. I'm talking about my work. Right. Yeah. You know, I feel more well, easier to connect than, uh, right. than just in random conversations. Like, how does the art actually happen? Yeah, because it's, it it's a discovery that people have a few levels of discovery when they look at my stuff. So I really, really want to be there. So we were just talking about art in a retail space and being at fairs and... Interaction but I, with the public. But I really want to talk about, sort of, let's back it up a little bit, and I wanted to ask you, Gavin, if you could continue talking a little bit about your art practice and how does that sort of lead into the final product that you guys then have to talk to the public about it in various capacities? Well, for me is um, I give myself um, assignments. Um, I'll go off to the country and a farm and one of, my friend, one of my friend's farms and I'll spend a couple of weeks there and I'll just shoot and I'll just sort of live the life and sort of get a feel for it, like sort of take it on. I mean, I'm not milking cows and goats and anything like that, or <laughs> feeding chickens, you know. I, I mean, cool. <laughs> it's cool with me. That's you know, I mean, it's a little more like, you know, I put on my, my willies and I go mm -hmm. do my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, that's, and that's wonderful because I get to experience, um, I get to have an experience and I get to bring that experience into my work. And that's, a, that's what I like to do. I like to bring experiences to my work so that 
when someone has that piece on the wall and they're looking at it or someone else's, they can have their own experience from what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. right. It can never be exactly what you meant. What, oh, the, what the right. viewer gets is never exactly what you right, meant. Right, exactly. You know, someone's so. going to, you know, somebody's going to think it's Mars and someone's going to think it's, you know, downtown. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, right, so you have to just let them interpret it. Exactly. You know, I, I like that because they're... You're not being precious with it. No, right. right. You have to you let know, go of it. Because at some right. point you have to let go right. of it. You have to create it and let let it go out and let it let it uh, take its own life on with whoever buys it or is looking at right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And a lot of artists don't like to like sell their work, which I don't understand. I don't either. Yeah. You know, not for sale. And I'm going. Are you nuts? You know. I mean. <laughs> so right. it is precious when they have an NFS. Well, you know, well, that. sometimes that's like a. It's like I'm not sure how to describe. It. Sometimes I feel like that's not like it's not a professional approach. Right. Like if you make things and they're great and they're beautiful but you don't want to, to share them, right. then that's more of a personal at home thing. It's not something you really want to get out there. Right. Like for people like us, I'm assuming, right. we really want to get out whatever right. we're doing. Sure. I want as many people to see it as possible, possibly even buy it. And right. I think some people when they create, they, they really don't get that. Right. that and there's something interesting it's about it's someone where the predominant show will be not for sale. And right. In some cases, they are taking up real estate in the gallery. That's right. right. That sure. could be yeah. for yeah, someone who right. wants right. to show their work yeah. and sell it. But also, certain people have certain. I mean, I think it's a case by case. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, I think I certain artists right. has certain issues with certain other. You know, whatever it is that's going on, the in the political scene that is. Right. Um, so I think there's a lot of politics that goes along sure. with these things yeah, too. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And what's sure. for sale? But I mean, personally, it's like I put everything for sale. Right. You yeah. know. Except one piece in my house right now, which right. is not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's, but in it's your in your house, house right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and a few times I've created a body of work for a show, and, and one piece I just won't let right. go. Right. Right. I just, they, right. May I give it to somebody or keep right. it myself. Right. It's right. just it's something you want to make sure you can go find. If you it goes to. Right. Well, I like visiting my work. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, and I've got yeah. a I've got a client um, in shady in shady side who's got seven pieces, and she started. I mean, she pretty much paid for my trip out of here when I was leaving. Um, and then when I came back, she bought another piece. And she bought like two pieces during the year, so, you know, between that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, you know, to have that sort of loyalty to my brand is mm -hmm. yeah, such well, a wonderful thing. Anytime you can find a regular collector or someone mm -hmm. that always will want to see what you're doing and right. every now and then buy one, that's yeah. really great. You know? Yeah, it's wonderful. I like that thought of loyalty. Like when right. you're here and having clients in Pittsburgh and outside Pittsburgh and right. having this kind of, um, loyalty to what you're creating and right. being able to maintain that. Yeah, well so. it's nice when you find a little group of people or pocket of people that really are responding to what you're doing. And they're, you know, they can be anywhere. Right. But like, you know, my work because it's final material appeals to a certain type of art buyer. You right. know, it's not just every art buyer or any type right. of uh, format that you're going to see it. Right. Same with photography or collage. Right. Well, so. I also think that, Bill, with your work, it's not just about that it appeals because of the materiality of it that appeals to it, but also the content of your work. So, like, you yeah, have sure. clients like Gail Zappa. I mean, you have right. Frank Zappa's album cover yeah, is sure. your art. Right. I mean, yeah, that's right. pretty unbelievable. Sure. Yeah, no, that was or cool. we're right. at the Three Rivers Arts Festival and a major act is on stage and they're like, Tweeting about Bill Miller. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's kind of exciting to right. me. I'm like, oh my god, I'm friends with Bill. Right. Well, that was kind of funny. <laughs> Major but, people, right. you know. But but that's what happens because when you're out there in the world and you're at these fairs or you're talking to people right. and you're you're in a dialogue, not just with your materiality, but but like you were saying, Gavin, with your with what your inspirations, right? right. That, that there's your inspiration bills. I mean, there, you have so many amazing inspirations. Like right. music is a huge sure. inspiration yeah. for you, it's, right? Yeah, so it's a major one. You have sure. clients that are musicians. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I, mean, I think music plays a lot, a big part in a lot of artists' right. work. I mean, um, in my work personally, it it major plays a major. Right. I set moods, and you know, I Absolutely. I'm like, okay, this is the mood I'm feeling, right. and I return to this mood each time I'm in the studio. Like I'm working on a series right now, and the mood is Craig Armstrong, who's a composer, and every time I'm in the studio, it's like the headphones goes on, it's Craig Armstrong. I'm walking to the studio and Craig Armstrong, because I have to get into that. I think I know that. who you're talking about. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking he's amazing. About. <laughs> um, I have to get into that mood where it's like very like surreal, you know, it's like dark and lush because that's what I want, you know. Mm -hmm. You watch what you want in your work. Yeah, and so, yeah. But film, I mean, film, television, um, a lot of print plays, you know, a major part of my work. You know, because I want to see what's going on in the world and I want to be on top of it. Right. I don't care about, you know, a lot of other things. I don't care what's happening in the top 20, you know, <laughs> but I want to know what's 
what other people are doing that's you know cutting edge still and edgy and cool and interesting and, and can add to what you're doing or inform exactly what you're or can do. inform right. what I'm doing. Yeah. And knowing about what other people are doing, I think involves a lot of travel. And right. But I also think about you're bringing um, an art fair. Like, how would an art fair would that help break some of a glass ceiling? Make it all depends Different on the context or, or what, what, what is happening with it. But the thing that's nice about an art fair that I didn't get to say earlier is it does bring that audience to one place. Right. So even though mm -hmm. there's a lot for them to choose from, a lot for them to see, they are art appreciative, they're art appreciators. It's appreciative, a destination. Yeah, right. Right. Whether they're buyers or not is to be determined, but they definitely came there to see art. So they have a, a reason to really look at it and to get into it, to experience it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, well, um, Evan, Evan, I forgot his last name. Mirapol. Yeah, mm -hmm. did photo the photo fair. Right. Um, and that was a wonderful thing. I mean, like I'm a photographer, so I love all that stuff. Um, but he he had to really work very hard to sort of pull it together. And he used a lot of his own like um, skills and to ha to keep it going for a very yes. long time. Yes. Um, and there was a lot of support from the communities there, um, and. And I think art fairs are great, but if there's not a lot of people buying, right. then why are people going to come for an art fair? Right. You know, I mean, art fairs are wonderful, but I think maybe we should think about exporting the talent instead of trying to bring the art fairs here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about mm -hmm. it's about taking that talent to another level and to other places. And um, it's great that you know, but I mean, you can get on the goddamn bus, you know, mega bus for fifty bucks, and go to Chicago and go to an art fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. spend go a day. To sofa. Right. Right. Go to yeah. structural. Sure. You know what I mean? And then, like, I mean, I've done things like that where I get on a bus one morning, leave, you know, leave wherever I get there at like noon or wherever, and then spend like six hours, and then get on a bus and go back to New York. I mean, it's like you have to wanna, <laughs> you have to wanna learn, and you have to wanna sort of partake. You know, you wanna, you still have to be fearless. I mean, yes, I agree. You know, when you know, one of the things that bothers me, I think about our generation, the generations coming up under mine and yours of artists is they don't really get to experience anything because their experience is the internet. Right, I was going to say is a right. screen. And the internet isn't an experience, mm -hmm. I mean it's another tool, it's like a phone, it's like a, you know, actually sitting there and sitting like in a barn and hearing a wolf die and hearing these are experiences. Well yeah, well that's happening with that younger generation for sure. Mm -hmm. and just. To play off what you just said, I understand that Instagram is the number one way art is viewed in the world. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's a. Mm. I mean, you know. That's really funny. You I said mean, that. I mean, I'm involved. I I, I I post mm. on Instagram Same here too. But yeah, you know. I, I don't post my work on Instagram that much. I'm. I, I have a thing where I don't like. I don't want to overexpose. I like to be under the radar. Um, I don't want everyone to know like what is happening. Right Every moment. In my studio. Right. I mean, like, yeah, I would take a photograph because I'm having right. a drink or something, or right. I'm someplace fantastic, but right. I don't need to share with the world to get the world to like me. Right, well, here yeah. I am today I doing this, here I am today yeah. doing this. You know, not interested. <laughs> well, there's also copyright issues with that. Yeah, there is. Right, there sure. are unresolved right. copyright there's issues lots. with constantly sharing your work online, right. and there's. Well, you kind of have to know when you're putting it out there that you're letting it go to some right. extent. Yeah. The, the image of it, the mm -hmm. photo of it, not right. the actual piece, but the right. photo of it. Right. Yeah. And you've got to be okay that, you know, someone's going to take something and reuse it. And, right. Sure. Because, I mean, like I do. Yeah, sure. You know, so right. I'm Absolutely. okay with it. You know, it's a different, I think it's a generational thing. Hmm. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I like, I like making collage, but now I'm kind of uptight about, oh my God, whose copyright am I violating? Yeah. Well, you, you know, know, because it be, it's become a thing now. Right, I mean, right. I, I appreciate it on one hand, but then, I, you know, you're using other people's images right. to create a new image. So right. how much right. of that is... Well, a lot of times it's not whether it's a photographic process or a by-hand process, which is part of it. And also it's about whether you use the whole image or just a section of it or what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a whole bevy of, of laws or right. things that apply to it. And that. it's got to be changed, like, you know, like 50%, 20%. Right, exactly. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of... Because we, I guess we both use public. I do, yeah. I do. Sometimes. I use them literal, or I just use them as a concept for an idea, depending right. either right. way. You know, and I draw a lot of my inspiration or, or inspiration from images based on history and historical events. Sure. So I look at that stuff, and I have books, and I go through those, and that's where I can come up. So with you're probably really excited about 
England just decided to release all of these images. Oh, is that right? Public domain. Like no, that. I don't think I heard Amazing. that. Um, Who did? England. Really? Yeah, all of these new images are being released. It's like um, thousands and thousands oh, of images wow. into cool. public domain. Yeah, right. But then we cool. also Which have, I'm excited about as yeah, a sure. collage. Well, well, then we also have these problems with images now, too, like where, uh, you know, Corbis purchased, you know, so many images from history, including major iconographic images from Vietnam and, right. you know, things that really have informed culture. And, you know, they've buried them in Iron Mountain. Right. You know, that's right. what they've done. And so in order to digitize all of these images, it will take something like 463 years or something to right. do that if you just kept digitizing all these images. Now, of course, I don't know that we need every single image in the archive, but, you know, the whole concept about archiving and and sort of history is, you know, certain people own that and right. certain people don't. And I think right. the privatization of some of that it can be really problematic right. you know, yeah, for sure. photography yeah. in particular. Right. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna dig a hole in the ground and put everything. That's very good. Right. They can find it a thousand years. You know, from I, now. I feel like I, I feel that um, I don't have the luxury to worry about that. Right. You know, that's something that um, that's a luxury for me to worry about that. Right. Um, you know, so uh, that's, yeah, that's a luxury. I, I kind of agree with that sentiment. I don't really think about it too much, especially given how things are right now. Right. I think it's kind of interesting when people will post their stuff, but then they'll have a shadow of their name across the whole middle of it. Right. So you can't really even see the, right. the image, right. but they're trying to. You know, you can watermark things differently, by the way. You don't have to do it across the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. You can do it in the information. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's just, it's, you know, there, there's people that are really concerned about it. Well, I, 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 guilty, totally guilty of that. Like, I watermark um, my images, you know, especially when going out to like art, bu certain art buyers and stuff, because you never know what's right. gonna. Well, photography is different. You know what's yeah. gonna turn mm -hmm. up where, and you know, so I just basically cut everything out of my logo, and it's just the, you know, just the light of my logo, and it's just bam, three times over it, right. and I try to like not. Interrupt the visual right, flow. Of the that's image. important. I think if you have a nice yeah. logo, it's not yeah. so disruptive. But right. Right. like people have their whole names and right. yeah. it's yeah. that type yeah. font. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> we know your names, Gavin. Right. So <laughs> we're really psyched thank to you. see your work in the future. We want to thank right. you for being here. Before we wrap up, today. do you have anything that you want to tell us about that's happening in the future? Not especially. I mean, not really. I mean, there's just stuff that's happening. That's there's still a lot of balls in the air and. I kind of don't like. I kind of. I don't discuss them anymore until they're happening. Can you say your website? Yeah, it's uh, gavinbenjamin.com. Billmillerart.com. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you guys for having us. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thanks. 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 <laughs> nice meeting you. Thanks, Jen. Nice to meet you. Hey, thank you. Bill and Gavin, and thank you for watching Art Happens. I'm Christiana Leach, and this is Jen Saffron. Follow the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council and PCTV for more episodes with local artists and to find out more information about our guest today. If you love what we did, please consider a donation to the Artist Opportunity Fund. That's pittsburghartscouncil.org slash artist fund. Join us again, Art Happens Tea.